Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And today we're going to talk about something other than electric cars. We're going to talk about battery backup power supplies. And so, what is a battery backup power supply? Well, a battery backup power supply is similar to, say, uh, a gasoline-powered inverter or generator or propane powered or diesel powered whatever it's an inverter that is powered by a battery so the battery provides DC voltage to the inverter the inverter inverts that to AC so that we can run um, appliances or whatever you want to run so here are some uses for a battery backup power supply Time of day savings. That's what we use ours for on a daily basis. The um, cost of electricity during daytime hours versus at night, there's quite a differential there, uh, especially where we are. And so uh, by using the battery backup to charge an electric vehicle, for instance, during the day when the rate of power or energy is high, we use our battery backup for that. And then we charge the battery backup at night. It's on a timer, and so it comes on and is recharged at night when the rate is low. And so we see a savings of that differential between the daytime cost and the nighttime cost. So that's one possible usage for your battery backup power supply. Another one is uh, power backup during outages. Uh, here in Northern California, we've had several in recent months uh, because the utility has um, cut off the power due to um, weather issues, high wind, uh, low humidity, high fire danger, that type of thing. And in, in rural areas like we are, it's not uncommon to lose power due to uh, a drunk driver hitting a power pole or a tree going down uh, on the lines, um, so forth. And so it's a, a very convenient uh, backup source during an outage. Uh, a remote power source. Uh, there are people that live off grid and uh, so something like this is nice um, because it can provide power and they can uh, go up to a cabin on the weekend, plug in, run all weekend, take it back home, charge it at night, that type of thing. Or as a generator extender. So say you run uh, three days or four days off of this battery backup and then, you know, for a... Uh, uh, one day you use the generator. Well, in my case, in my house, my generator is more than enough to run my entire house and charge one of these battery backups at the same time. So it extends my uh, off-grid run time uh, during a power outage. So I can run generator one day and use the backup, uh, the battery backup for four days. So. Now I have five days of power, but only one day of generator uh, time. So the amount of fuel I use is less, the noise I produce is less, that type of thing. Uh, you can use it for a job site power, you know, uh, certain job sites where they may not have power available or whatever the case may be. Um, and then RV and marine. Well, I can put this battery back up in the bed of my truck and I can plug my fifth wheel trailer into it allows me to be off-grid uh, on those rare occasions when we do something like that. Another nice feature of the battery backup is that they're scalable, okay? Uh, you know, we make our own, so we can make it whatever we want. So we can uh, dictate the battery pack size, the capacity. So I'm going to show you an example of one uh, in a moment. And uh, it was just our prototype. It, uh, it's in an unfinished container. You'll see the metal hasn't been powder coated yet or anything like that. Um, 
it was just one that we did uh, quickly to use during you know uh, some power outages and so it uh, it's kind of rough but you'll get the idea but what I wanted to say is that we can make that battery pack size anything we want this one that I'll show you is a 12.8 kilowatt hour we can make it 30 kilowatt hours we can make it a hundred kilowatt hours we can make it five kilowatt hours you can make it whatever you want and so of course the battery pack size will dictate your runtime you know how much energy you have available to power whatever you're going to power you also have control over the inverter size this particular one again that I'm going to show you uh, is a 3,000 watt continuous inverter 6,000 watt maximum and we chose that because it will run the air conditioning uh, or one of the air conditionings on the on the travel trailer and it will run you know a refrigerator uh, lighting your television uh, your internet connection all that kind of thing and you can be home and comfy when the power's out. You can also dictate the charger size. So that's you know how fast are you going to be able to recharge that battery pack. The, the, the larger the charger you get, you know, the faster you can do that. And you can get them that operate on 110 or 220 and or 220. Okay. And so you have a lot of flexibility of design based on what you want and of course there are multiple ways that you can recharge this battery backup power supply you can do it using solar you can do it do it using the grid like I mentioned earlier you can take advantage of the time of day uh, charging there are people that have their own wind uh, generation capability. Um, I know a lot of people that have their own small hydro. And of course, you can, like I talked about earlier, use a gas or internal combustion powered generator or an inverter to recharge it. So you have options, which is always nice. You know, your house, you know, you typically have a utility and people that have grid tied uh, solar when the utility goes down, so do you. So unless you have battery backup, you're going to be in the dark just like everybody else, even though you have solar generation capability on your roof. So what are some of the advantages of using a battery backup power supply? Well, they're quiet, convenient, no gas, no, uh, you know, a lot of people, they don't use it that often. And so you got to make sure that, you know, the gas is good Got to make sure that things going to start when you need it to start that kind of thing. Um, and so, you know, a battery backup, that's just something you could roll around or that's sitting in the garage all the time. Um, you plug in, turn it on. That's it. I mean, you know, nothing else to mess with. You can use it indoors or out. You can actually have, you can actually sit on it while it's powering your house. I mean, uh, there's no harmful fumes, uh, no noise, so forth. So you can use it indoors or out. Uh, nothing like being in a snowstorm or a windstorm and the rain's blowing and it's cold. You gotta drag the generator out, fire it up, run the extension cords inside. Uh, been there, done that. Uh, no maintenance. No maintaining the fuel, no changing the oil, uh, no replacing spark plugs, none of that stuff. This thing doesn't require anything from you really. And long lasting. These lithium uh, cells that we use will definitely outlast any generator you buy. They'll outlast you and me. And especially in this type of application, yeah, they're just no no worries. So let's look at the flip side. What's 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 a downside of a battery backup power supply? 
Well, the two things that come to my mind right away as far as a downside to a battery backup is the cost and weight. Uh, my generator, two guys can pick it up and put it in the, in the bed of a pickup. Um, the inverters we use, um, they're pretty light. You can pick them up, one person, put them in a bed of pickup. Uh, this 12.8 kilowatt hour battery pack I'm going to show you, it weighs over 300 pounds. So two guys could do it, but it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty good deadlift. And, uh, and then the cost, you know, lithium cells are not cheap. And so you've got the cost of the battery, the cost of the inverter, the cost of the charger. And, uh, and all the advantages of having a custom made item that fits your needs and your use perfectly comes at a cost. And let's take a look at this uh, unit that I was talking about. All right, here's the top cover of our prototype unit, the one you're going to see in a moment, uh, uh, charging uh, an EV and then uh, being recharged itself. So what we have is, um, is, is something that we built uh, just to be prepared for impending uh, power outages. And we like the idea so well that uh, we're, we're building several just to have on hand at different locations. And so we, in this case, took uh, the battery box uh, out of our Carmen Ghia, which we sold recently. So we had the battery box because we kept all the EV components and put most of them into our VW Beetle. Uh, we did a recent video talking about that. And so literally 90% of the parts uh, for this we already had. Um, and so this is just made from stuff laying around uh, the shop. So recycled pieces, you'll see some holes that were already in this piece and so forth. We just used what we had laying around, make it quick and inexpensively. So the bottom of this unit is, of course, the battery box. We put some wheels on it. At one end, we put some casters. And so we can wheel it around uh, a warehouse or a shop uh, very easily. And then the uh, battery pack, like I said, is, is sizable, whatever size you want. In this case, uh, we're using uh, 40 100 amp hour cells. And so it's in a uh, 8S 5P arrangement. So we have uh, eight groups of five cells in parallel, and those eight groups are in series, which gives us basically a 24 volt battery. Uh, to be technical, the uh, nominal voltage is 25.6 because these are lithium iron manganese phosphate cells with a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts. And so uh, that gives us that, like I said, 25.6 volts and 500 amp hours. And since 80% of the capacity is usable at this uh, lithium chemistry. That means that we have 400 amp hours of usable capacity. So that then is powering a uh, 3000 watt inverter. That's 3000 continuous watts, 6000 maximum. And we have uh, basically four outputs. So we have um, on the side over here where the inverter is, we have two outputs that are GFI protected. Uh, it's a 20 amp duplex, and then we have another 20 amp duplex right here. The, the entire system is protected by our JLD 404. We have quite a few videos uh, talking about the JLD 404 intelligent amp hour meter. 
This is protecting the battery pack from being overcharged or over discharged. We also have a DC to DC converter and that takes that uh, battery pack voltage and converts it to 12 volts. We have a 12 volt gauge so we can monitor that DC to DC converter. So the JLD 404 uh, will turn that off also. So to protect the pack, it shuts everything off. The reason for the 12 volts is to operate our contactors and our relays, uh, the main reason. And since we have 12 volts, we added the 12 volt accessories. So we can flip a switch and that provides 12 volt power through uh, USB ports as well as a 12 volt uh, you know, cigarette uh, lighter style uh, power port. So operation of the unit. Well we've got two switches and a light. The light's just to let you know that the uh, unit is on. And we have a toggle switch here and I have the thing turned off right now. The, the, the battery is turned off. But to the left uh, is our inverter and to the right is our charger. So to turn on the inverter we, we put that to the left and push and hold down the button. The green light will come on and she's going to run. Now it will run until we turn it off here or your battery pack voltage got so low that our instrumentation would shut it off. Okay. Again, the JLD 404, not only does it uh, allow the programmability and the protection of our battery pack, but it also monitors the battery pack, showing us our amps, our volts, and our amp hours. To recharge the battery pack, we put it over to the right. Again, press this momentary button. The contactor will close, allowing the uh, charger to be powered up. Plug in your charger and it will recharge the battery pack. The charger has uh, is programmed internally to shut off when it reaches our charge 2 voltage, which in this case is 28 volts. But we also have a redundancy here in case you had a failure with the charger's own internal circuitry to shut off, this will shut off the contactor and shut everything off. So it's just the redundancy, protect our pack from being overcharged, which is probably the worst thing you could do. And so uh, that's just a, a redundancy that we have programmed in or designed in. So that's it. It's quite simple, which is what you want. It's basically uh, a, a battery pack, an inverter, and a charger, and some control circuitry, and uh, and some 12 volt accessories also. But you could design this. You know, if you wanted 24 volt output, you could. If you wanted to run a 48 volt inverter, you could. Uh, you want to run a 146 volt inverter, you can. Uh, when you do something like this, it's totally, uh, you know, up to you. That's the beauty of, of making your own things. Um, that's the beauty of converting your own vehicle from internal combustion to electric. Is you design it your way to do what you want it to do. And of course, the uh, satisfaction in doing that is uh, is priceless. So this is our backup power supply charging the e-golf and it's a smaller battery pack than the e-golf so it wouldn't charge it from empty but definitely uh, the uh, 25 miles that we've driven the vehicle uh, since it was charged we can charge it up with this no problem and uh, then we can charge this backup battery pack tonight when the rates are at their lowest and we're charging now uh, during the middle of the day when the rates are higher so this allows us for some uh, energy savings 
and it's just one of the many uses for this backup power supply. And you also have the 12 volt yeah, capability. We've got the uh, USB ports and uh, a regular 12 volt power. So as the um, that's our 12 volt source which runs all the electronics also see it right there digitally and so right now we're pulling about 90 amps out of the pack uh, and the pack voltage is just about 24 volts and we've used 59 amp hours thus far. This pack is 500 amp hours, 400 which is usable which is the 80 percent of the 500 and the uh, nominal voltage is uh, 25.6 volts. So, so anyway, uh, like I said, just one of the many uses for a backup power supply. So here's the backup battery pack being recharged. It's almost finished. It, uh, the setup we have on this one recharges at uh, 35 amps but we're getting towards the end so it's down to 31 amps. It'll shut off at 28 volts. And when it gets to that 28 volts it shuts everything off. Shuts off the 12 volts everything so there's absolutely no draw on the battery once it shuts off and this is our lifting apparatus it's just pivots up like yay and then the hoist will hook to it and I'll show you that so this allows it to be lifted up with uh, an engine uh, hoist or cherry picker, whatever you want to call it, and lift it into the bed of a pickup or onto a trailer. And so it uh, works out great for us. We can move it to multiple locations. And uh, it's actually quite quick to do. Just hook it up and uh, jack it up, put it in, and disconnect all in probably under five minutes.